Being born too early is the major cause of death and disability in children up to five years of age in the developed world. Discovering how to prevent this major complication of pregnancy needs to be one of our highest priorities. In a paper published in the American Journal of Obstetrics and Gynaecology this year, we reported the results of the first full year of the West Australian Preterm Birth Prevention Initiative. This initiative successfully lowered the rate of early birth across the population. Recent advances have expanded our knowledge of how some cases of preterm birth may be prevented. However, effective implementation of such strategies across an entire population has remained a challenge. For each healthcare system at each environment, a different set of strategies will be required. Western Australia has now hosted a whole of population series of strategies designed specifically to lower the rate of preterm birth across this population. Commencing in mid-2014, we rolled out a multifaceted series of strategies aimed specifically to lower the rate of preterm birth. There were five key interventions. First, we introduced measurement of the length of the cervix as a standard feature of all mid-pregnancy ultrasound scans. Second, natural vaginal progesterone was prescribed for any case of shortened cervix length. Third, vaginal progesterone was also prescribed for any case where there was a history of spontaneous preterm birth with or without preterm pre-labor rupture of membranes occurring between 20 and 34 weeks gestation. Fourth, all healthcare practitioners and the general public were provided with information on the risks of late preterm and early term birth, with no pregnancy to be ended before at least 38 and a half weeks gestation unless there was obstetric or medical justification to do so. Fifth, we commenced a dedicated preterm birth prevention clinic at King Edward Memorial Hospital, which is the state's tertiary level perinatal centre. The program was badged as the whole nine months and involved outreach education for all healthcare practitioners across our state, together with print and social media public health campaigns for all women and their families. So what happened? In the first calendar year of operation across the entire state, the rate of preterm birth fell by 7.6%. This graph is a run chart with the rate of preterm birth on the vertical axis. The dotted line indicates the median bi-monthly rate of preterm birth from the previous years. Very soon after commencement of the initiative, the rate fell. Within each gestational age group, the rate also fell significantly, including the 32 to 36 week category and the 28 to 31 week category where commencement of the decline was not as soon. Numbers in the 20 to 27 week category were less but showed a non-significant decrease. Within the state's sole tertiary level centre, the decrease was even greater with a reduction of 20% including down to the 28 to 31 week category. So where did the preterm births go? Of births within the term gestational age group, there was a significant increase in births in the 39 week group and to a lesser extent in the 37 week group. These results have shown that a comprehensive and multifaceted preterm birth prevention program aimed both at healthcare practitioners and the general public and using existing knowledge can significantly lower the rate of preterm birth.